Okay, good evening, officers and members. Can I uh, take any apologies? <laughs> Code of conduct, please. Okay. Minister Previous, you're happy with the accurate record. Maybe happy to sign on as such. Okay. Before we begin, can I welcome Gareth Stan, who's taken over from Joe. Thank you. Check the order, sir. Welcome, sir. Thank you. We now go to item six, the um, Warrington Electoral Review. Tim, you want to pick up with that, please? Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, members have got a lot of paper in support of this item. Um, it makes up the, the bulk of the, um, uh, of the paperwork that we have tonight. But I would um, uh, suggest that you, um, uh, I'll speak to the report on pages 25 to uh, 29 of the agenda, um, which uh, explains to you what you need to do this evening. Just by way of background, and my, uh, my, my explanation will be short, but obviously you can ask questions of me. I think all members are aware that there is a current um, uh, council membership of 57 uh, distri distributed amongst um, a combination of three, two, and one, one member ward um, uh, in, in, in the south of the world. Those arrangements were established in 2002 um, after a previous um, local government boundary commission review. We were notified in August that the Commission um, wished to conduct a review of um, our arrangements because over time the equality of um, uh, the wards had, as it were, deteriorated and there wasn't equality throughout the borough. And you appreciate that the Local Government Boundary Commission tried to achieve um, arrangements where uh, citizens are equally represented. It's not possible to do that in a mathematically perfect way, but as far as possible. And the boundary commission <coughs> work on the basis of variations. And they saw sufficient variation in our ward pattern uh, to justify the review. And so, the, um, uh, the first dialogue with the uh, commission arose when uh, representatives visited uh, Warrington in October. And certainly some of the members here tonight are yourself, Chair, Councillor Marks and Councillor Kennedy, you were at that meeting, and we had an explanation of what the procedure is associated with the review. And I have to say that some of the procedure is counter-instinctive. It doesn't happen in quite the way that one might feel instinctively is the logical way of, um, of doing things. But we have some clear, uh, some clear guidance from the Boundary Commission, a lot of which I have appended to, uh, to this report say how things, um, how, how things uh, should work. Now, the Commission have made it absolutely clear that the first thing they require of the Council is a view on what the Council size should be, the numbers of councillors. They are not interested in this stage about how um, that number, whatever it is, how it should manifest itself in terms of um, wards. That comes much later. Um, and that, to my mind, is one of the learning points. It is counter-instinctive, because I understand that people, you know, if it is to be a particular number, how that, that will look on the ground. But we have to wait um, until that, that figure is, is, is identified, how it's established. Um, the other key factor is that, and again, just latch on to this as a fact that if there is a council size um, that is a figure not divisible by three, in those circumstances that leads to a very, very strong presumption that there will be all interactions. A very strong presumption. And it's almost incapable of being rebutted. Nothing's impossible, but that, I think, for those that have um, um, uh, heard the Commission speak, um, would, would um, agree with me that that's the clear message that's been given. Equally, um, Commission representatives came to Warrington on the uh, 3rd of December, as I recall, and 17 members, which I think is actually, um, we were very pleased that uh, such a high number of members were able to attend the briefing sessions in early December, heard 
uh, from the Commission Direct about what the procedure was, and their guidance, their slides that were um, distributed at the meeting are appended those to this current report. And so, um, we've um, convened uh, uh, an extraordinary meeting of the Council on the 26th of January, uh, where we will be looking for a resolution from the Council on its preferred Council signs. Um, we prepared a draft document that would um, accompany that decision of the Council in, uh, in, uh, uh, in, in January, at the end of the month. Um, and whatever figure the Council may determine, um, the submission that we've done in draft, and most of that is in, in accordance, is template stuff really, the um, uh, that uh, Brown Megan has kindly uh, compiled. Um, that will be sent to the Commission along with the, um, uh, the decision that we made. So really, it's over to members. If you've got any questions, I'll happily take them. But this is an opportunity for you, prior to council meeting, to have a discussion. Any points that you wish to make, we will compile and circulate to all members um, before the council meeting in a top-up letter. Unfortunately, the council summons goes out tomorrow, so we can't capture everything um, for dispatch tomorrow. This is complicated, but I'll try to explain in the simplest way possible, because there's a bit of a cloudy point, there's a lot of material there. So, Chair, with that, I'll leave it, um, I'll, I'll leave it at that. I've no questions, but I'll uh, hand it back to you. Okay, well, before I open it, can I just seek a point of clarification, Tim? Yeah. You mentioned that uh, it was the total number of uh, members divisible by three. Mm -hmm. It's not also the case that each ward must have three members if you want to go for elections by thirds. Uh, yes, effectively, yes. So yes, yes, that's correct. Yes. So even if we have 57 members or 60, mm. or less, mm. 54, it'd have to be 18, 19 or 20 mm. uh, wards. Yes, yes. and you, you, you as, uh, as local representatives will understand the implications of that and the, the challenge that that would apply. The challenge of creating 18, yeah. 19 or 20, mm. three member wards. Mm. Okay, any, uh, any other comments? Or? Thanks, uh, <coughs> thanks, Chairman. Hold well, on, let's get this working. Um, just looking at the recommendations on page 29, it might well be a failing on my part, but on 11.1 it talks about Appendix 3. Mm. Appendix 3 is on page 124 in, in my report, uh, and that's all to do with Kyrgyzstan Parish Governance Review. It, has there been a, a, a typing error there, and, and should it be Appendix 2, which actually isn't in the report? Or, or is, it, is it somewhere else? The document that refers to, if you bear with me, um, uh, unless uh, Brian is going to beat me to it, it's the document that commences at page 63, 63 of your agenda. Um, and that, that is marked Appendix 3. We've got two Appendix 3s. So I do apologise. No, no, but it is, it is the document that's headed um, uh, Council Submission. Yeah, that's what I thought was the yeah. case. So I just need him to seek that. We'll make that case. Absolutely. absolutely. It's obviously yeah. hugely <laughs> important. I think that would be important. Um, okay, well, now you know where you are. Do you want to try and <coughs> uh, Not for the moment. I'll let somebody yeah. else speak, but I might come back yeah. to you in a moment if I may. Uh, I have a number of points, Mr. Chairman. Do I just shall I work through them all? Please. Yes, okay. The first one is on page 25. Um, 3.1, which is the timing. I mean, I, I, mean, I realise now from the words that said that everything is a bit of a sort of a rush. We're trying to race things through. But I mean, it, I think I find it disappointing because we actually, the, the council had a letter on the 13th of June, because I've got a stamp here received by the Chief Executive's Office, talking about this electrical review programme. And I just find it disappointing it wasn't until well into the autumn when I first knew about it. For example, I mean, there was a briefing at the local government uh, association conference, which I could have gone to, but I didn't know anything about it at that stage. So there was a several months, um, uh, nothing happened. So I, I just sort of put that sort of information. The second thing on page 27, well, it, it, it's, a, it's a general point here. Tim talked quite a lot about the sort of word counterintuitive nature of this. And I think we feel quite strongly that, I mean, there are three decisions, as we know. There's the, the number of councillors, the method of election, and the makeup of the wards. I mean, to our mind, the whole thing is, in, is all intrinsic, it's all together. And therefore, I accept, I mean, I'm, I'm not, it's not the council this, it's the Boundary Commission mm -hmm. way of doing it. Having said that, if we had a bit more time, I would have thought that this council 
could have actually decided all these three things together, even though we don't have to actually submit anything to the Boundary Commission at a, at a later date. Mm -hmm. Anyways, again, I, I just sort of throw that in. Uh, the next one, if I'm... Bear with me, I'll get my tabs. Uh, yes, I was pleased in 1.4 on page, page 70 that the original draft which Brian sent which talked about a presumption about an increased number of councillors has been changed. So it doesn't say that, it just talks about the optimum council size. So I, I'm grateful for that. Uh, next on page 72, this is the table of the projected ward forecast for 2020. Now I was under the impression that in fact that it was supposed to be the year 2021 from when we had the, the meeting Tim referred to. I thought it was 2021, but the figures we've got there for, for 2020. Um, the next thing, page 83, uh, 2.20, uh, a, a, a statement here which I just want to highlight because I very much agree with it. The council acknowledges that the growth of the electorate is not in itself a reason for increasing the number of councillors. And then talks about the impact of growth on members' workload is demonstrated later. I'll come back to that in a moment. Uh, page 103, 5.42. Now, this is probably my ignorance, but I, until I read this document, had never heard of the hearings subcommittee. I don't know what it's about. I can see some of the work it does, but I have not a clue who's on it. And I just feel it should say. Um, likewise, on page 104 and 105, we hear about the appeals committee, the chief officer employment committee, mayoral selection committee. I mean, I, I know who's on that because I've got paper. But it doesn't say in this document who's on it or the political makeup, and I feel that that's mm. all Can I just correct you there? The hearing subcommittee is part of the standards committee. Oh, is it? Okay. Mm. Well, um, thank you for that clarification. But again, perhaps, mm. unless I'm reading it, perhaps that uh, perhaps ought to be made a, a little bit clearer. Okay, thank you. Because, in fact, it's separated by the police and crime panel on the sort of listing mm. there. Um, the next thing, page 117, um, section 11. I'm a bit confused about this. It's number of responses. It says, in total, 30 responses were received. And then it lists the number from each of the parties, which is fine. And then it says, five did not provide an answer. It doesn't say all the answers, it says an answer. So does that really imply that only 25 responses were effectively received? And again, that's not quite clear, whether it's 30 or whether it's 25. Because if 30 responded but five didn't give an answer at all, well, surely that's effectively 25. Um, still on page 117, number 12, the future. I mean, this is the, you know, the influences on the number of councillors. I just feel that sort of the two perhaps increased the workload on councillors and two decreased it. The ones that might increase it, and certainly the, the template, I think, prompts prom 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 these questions. Localism, you know, if, as, as it's coming, uh, will mean that we probably will be making more decisions which could increase the workload. Likewise, I accept that sort of the, the savings and cutbacks uh, mean that there are sort of more disgruntled uh, electors out there who may well have more questions of councillors. Indeed, we, we're seeing that already. On the other hand, in the opposite direction, I mean, I, I speak for, uh, for Representative Ward, which hasn't got a huge number of council houses. Having said that, it has a reasonable number. Certainly, the number of housing queries I get these days is less than it used to be. And I assume this is because Golden Gate has become much more professional. And, of course, it's now sort of slightly removed from the council. So that is, I think, reducing councillors' workload. Mm -hmm. Likewise, the existence of the web and self-service is also, I believe, um, reducing the workload. So it works both ways there. And to my mind, there's no clear-cut case anywhere in here about exactly which is which. Um, page 172. And I, and I know my colleague, Brian, might have something to say on this, on the... the, the um, the survey that was done, so I'll let him make some points, but I find it rather difficult to understand this. Uh, I mean, let's just look at question one, the headings, the response total, I understand that. Why we particularly need a percent as well, I'm not quite clear. What the points and average are, I've not a clue, because to, unless I've missed it, there's, there's, those tables, columns are not filled in at all, so it's just cluttering up. And in the response total, uh, again, I find this confusing. It suggests here that Constitutional Subcommittee, eight responses, or it is in Corporate Governance Committee, seven responses. Now, I thought the Constitutional Subcommittee was a subcommittee of this, so I find the numbers there, and in fact, many of those numbers are a bit difficult to understand. Indeed, I'm querying whether they're right. Um, and I think the final point, if you're pleased to know, page 187, uh, 
in section 20, I, I, it's underage, but I use this to illustrate a point. In terms of this survey, I mean, I note that there's only one respondent um, aged 45 or less in the 35 to 44 age group, and the rest are, are older. So although the response rate on the survey was actually quite good, um, you cannot assume that in statistical terms that it's actually um, um, typical or, um, or a, a reasonable sample, because it may well be that sort of the, the older councillors have responded, or it may well be that councillors perhaps who are more committed and, and busier have responded, and the ones that are perhaps less committed um, haven't responded. So I think we have to be very careful about interpreting, interpreting this survey. I mean, I have questions about how the survey was done at very short notice and people doing it from guesswork, but that's a separate issue. Mm. That'll do me for the moment, thank you. Thank you. Well, now you've proved you've read the report. Anybody else? <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I'll, I'll go down here, if I may. I'll start at the bottom and then move up. So, Brian, did you want to? Yeah. <clears throat> well, Ian, Ian, as I said, everything. Um, one thing about the survey, um, I, I certainly didn't try to um, respond with uh, how much time I've done various things. Because so, for an exercise like that, one needs to keep a record. Mm. And we need to do that over at least one uh, cycle of council meetings and probably preferably two. So if we were going to do this, perhaps we should have started in September and then we might have had some meaningful information. I certainly wasn't going to uh, put in figures for which I really didn't have the evidence. So I, I, I have grave doubts whether this survey is of, of a great deal of use. But the other thing, um, Again, I've been trying to look at the numbers in wards um, and the way that uh, numbers of councils might be changed. It's a pretty intractable problem. Um, certainly, we'll, we'll need more time to be able to get a, a sensible um, total number that fits the circumstances. Because as a chairman, we're aware that there are certain wards uh, such as his own, which is geographically uh, very tightly defined. Uh, and how you would cope with that if you have a substantial change in uh, count number of councillors, I don't know. Um, so I'm afraid it really is all a bit last, last minute. I've I, I got uh, information on the numbers for 2020 while I was away. And the only thing I had to hand was a small pocket calculator. I didn't have a computer, so that made life quite Thank you, Jim. Uh, take the point that we made about the, the timetable. It's not our timetable. Mm. It's the Commission's timetable. Mm. Uh, and I also take the point that perhaps we've, we've gone the wrong way around. You, you probably rearrange your ward and then decide how many councils you need. But the Commission is saying, no, you'll decide how many councils you need, then you'll look at the wards. So logic doesn't necessarily apply when the Commission is concerned. Mm. But they're in charge. And they'd be taking the timetable. Mm. Matt, did you want to? Yeah. Mm. <coughs> so yeah. Uh, I had two questions. Uh, the first one is about some of the data in the reports. Um, on page 61, there's a table of data from the Boundary Commission which lists each of the wards, the electorate, and the variants for 2014. Mm. Um, <coughs> on page 72, there's a similar table. Um, in the draft response from the council, uh, which also has the electorate for 2014 and the variance. If I take Culture, Glaze, Green, Croft as an example, there's a difference in the electorate between those two tables for 2014. And the variance in the Boundary Commission's data says it is 2.6%, and the Borough Council's table says it's 5%. So. I don't know which is correct, and it, to be honest, it doesn't make any difference to the outcome, but presumably we should be working with the same data. So whatever we're working on should be the same as whatever they're working on. So that was the first one. I have one minor point as well. Uh, page 249, 0.8.3 talks about the savings that are made. Um, it talks about over a four-year period and so on, and at the end it says, uh, producing an estimated saving over a three-year period of up to £135,000. Um, I understand why three years is there, because the savings are made in three years where there isn't an election, but the savings are made over a four-year period. So I think the three in the last sentence of 8.3 should actually be a four. That makes sense. Yes, yeah. 
John? Yeah. That's quite right. So the two the two tables don't match up. Mm -hmm. start to, so you, start to, you start to worry then as much as anything else match up. Um, and I'm I'm still not convinced, I've read this a few times, that uh, we, we, there is a compulsion to have three member ones. That's because there's still some ifs and buts throughout that, and a lot of dependence on our replies to them. But what I, what I find interesting is that uh, they talk about the number of councillors, and as you just mentioned, without any boundary changes. Was that timetable? Is that within the total timetable we've brought to us? Or do we have to wait till we all set on the number of councils that we will require? Then we go back to the table again to talk about the boundary changes, which, as you know, when we went through this last the last one, it took us uh, nearly 18 months, I think, to set this up. This is this is my third boundary review. Exactly, it's mine. Review. And I know that the, re the rules have changed. Yes. This is the first time they've, do they've done this. They've actually said, and it's they don't have to do it, they make the rules. They said, thou shalt mm, yeah. decide the number of councillors first, and you'll do it by the end of this month. And then we've got until, presumably, uh, May of 2016 to come up with the boundaries, and they will approve those. But uh, our purpose tonight is not to actually get lost in the, no, the boundaries of the wards, or the, uh, whether we have one, two, three, or four members, or anything like that. It's to actually decide how many members of the council we think would adequately represent the people of Warrington and how many we need to do a satisfactory job. Uh, pointing out to the table of members who responded, over 40 odd, uh, I think we need as many members as possible to attract a wider number of people to the council. Uh, I think most councils are made of uh, 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 what you mean, sort of pale males in their late 50s or 60s. Not satisfactory, uh, and it needs. And, and if we reduce the number of members, and, and if we were to increase the workload to that only full-time people could do it, you're restricting the kind of people that put themselves forward. For example, people who worked, even part-time people couldn't make the task. So it is. It's important that we address the number of councillors necessary to do the job, and that is our task tonight. So, Paul, did you want to add anything? Okay. Yeah, thanks. Right. Well, in the documents, is we actually have we come down to a finite number? It's, uh, not, it's not in this document. If you look at the executive summary, it does mention 58, but uh, we, we, the document is not supposed to direct us no, no, okay. to that. It's, it's our decision, if you will, and it will be that will be the purpose of the debate on the 26th. Mm. Uh, we're not debating, we're not making a decision final tonight, it's the council's decision. Mm -hmm. We're just That's addressing right. the report and pointing out, as has been done, one or two inaccuracies, uh, and maybe clearing up from our own mind why we're actually putting, as I said, the cart before the horse and deciding how many counters we need to watch it and look at the makeup. So, that oh, just a What's our role here tonight then? Because are we just here reviewing it? Because we're reviewing it's, this it's document. A document that's been presented by the Electoral Commission. Yeah. We cannot make much comments about that except saying, you know, we either agree or disagree. We've got a full paper then and a massive amount of paper. For what reason, I don't know why we put half this I've got to say, I've had a sad afternoon. I've left everything. I've yeah. got a number of mistakes in it. They're yeah. continuous. And I, and I, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't dispute there are a number of mistakes. Why is it presented in this form? Because the I Commission have asked that it be presented. Yeah. It's and and something I, simple and straightforward. Well, you, you, you would think so. And I had this conversation this very afternoon with our officer yeah. colleague. Yeah. And so, uh, yes, it would be nice to put it in a logical, nice type uh, format. But unfortunately, that's not what the Commission want. They said, thou shalt present it in this manner, a la Sheffield. And that's the way we want it. Yes. And who are we to disobey? So, you know, they're calling the shots. You do it this way, our way. You know, it's I don't remember doing it this way last time. Yeah, but that's also, the rules have all changed. Mm. My logic's out the window. We have more maps. <laughs> oh, you've got all you've even started. You've started on the maps. I've still got them. Yeah, you haven't even started on the maps. Yeah. I mean, in, okay. really, to make this work, we've got to invade Trafford, I think, too. <laughs> yeah. I'm not going to a paperless society. Yeah. <laughs> Paul. Yeah, thanks, sir. Thanks, Chairman. Uh, maybe to help Matt, um, if we look on page 61, we can see where the... Where the, where, where the difference is, in, in so much the electoral commission, oh, sorry, the boundary commission are clearly working on the 
um, electors per council of 2,856, whereas we on page 72 at the top there are working on 2,746. So that's why you're going to get that percentage difference. So at some stage, we need to speak to the Boundary Commission and say, which figure is it are we to use? Because they could be working on uh, one set of electoral numbers, and, and we're working on maybe a later one or an earlier one. So we just need that clarification and redo the table. And I think Tim's going to answer you. Yeah. I think there's a very simple answer yeah. to that question. Yeah. The, um, the figures, we were asked to supply figures to the Boundary Commission in June, yeah. which we did. It's based, it's based on the figures that were available at that time. The register changes every month. It does. Um, it goes up and down. Now, the, the, uh, and I, I accept, um, in the spirit of the question has been asked, that point should be made clear. Because there's been an, a noticeable impact because of individual electoral registration, which is why the figures are, are declining. That may correct itself over time. It's a separate debate. But, the, um, but I think the point is well made by Councillor Smith, and, and, and Councillor Kennedy, you, uh, I, I think you're in, in do, um, and I can tell by members' body language, that that is the explanation. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, this is all documented, and I think some individual members may have had conversations with um, uh, colleagues in electoral services on, on this point. But I see the figures every month, evidently, and the, um, it is noticeable that they're not stable in any way. And um, in the, the, the last period, the past couple of months, um, they've been mark markedly um, erratic, more than one might expect. But it's a well-made point, and it's a question of tidying up the document. But while, whilst I'm on, I, I, I noted 11 separate points from Councillor Marx. Um, I, I don't know if it's your intention to invite me to respond to the totality of questions being made, um, or, or shall I leave it until others have, because I'm making notes to go wrong. Um, I don't know, do you want me to make a response to what's been said so far? Um, okay. Does anybody else want to? If, if I, may I just make another point? I mean, with, with regard to tonight talking about this number of 58, well, you know, I, I don't have a problem. That might well be the correct figure, but until the boundaries are looked at, we don't know definitively if that's the figure. It might need to be 60, it could be 63, it could be 54, you know, it could be a great variant. So, you know, if 58 is a sort of a broad brush figure, then that might well be correct. We're at the moment at 57. Uh, clearly, we've got some major imbalance over to the west of our borough that needs correcting, and it looks as though it needs some, some additional members there, um, and elsewhere at, at, at Fairfield and Howley. So, you know, I suppose as a, as a general, I mean, going back to what John was saying, it's very difficult. As, as a general principle, 58 sort of sounds as though it might well be about the right figure, but until we come up with these revised boundaries, which is a nightmare, really, you juggle one and you, you put another one totally out. Um, you know, I'm, I'm not quite sure how it's going to be modelled at all. Yes. That, that, would be a that would be a logical way to go about it. Yeah. I have explained that the Boundary Commission is not one of logic, mm. and they are insistent that you will come up, whatever basis you will, and prove to them what number you want. Mm. We're saying, we're, I'm, I'm saying 58 looks about right. I can't, I can't say definitely it's right, but I do know that they won't say, well, you can't go to 63 because they won't allow that kind of variance. Um, mm. They'll probably say plus or minus one or two. Uh, and, I, and I think because of the problems in the west, you know, the, 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 where the Middle Hall and the New Chapelford, uh, and the massive population, and the, the kind of community that's going to be created there, it's almost going to be like a new town. That's going to bring different problems that we're probably not normally used to, and require separate representation. Yeah. And will probably require, as I say, younger representation, because it's going to be a younger community, and they might want to elect people you know, of, of that age that they're going to be working, it's going to be a working, thriving community, hopefully, of younger people in their 30s, 40s. They may wish to see They may want a wise head, I'm sure it won't be yours, John. Tim, did you want to very swiftly address those 11 points? I'm sorry, Stephen, you indicated, I beg your pardon. And then drive off to Thank you. You've partially touched on what I was going to ask. Um, I think Busey and White Cross Ward is the, what it shall represent, is the, uh, the biggest drop after the individual electoral registration of 8%. Mm. 
um, which is you know goes a long way towards the 20% on your representation. Mm -hmm. So that was one issue, and I just take issue with Ian as well. I think uh, our experience would be that if you've got a, a, a large amount of social housing in the ward, then it does increase the workload. Mm -hmm. uh, but that doesn't take account. The Bank Commission don't take account of those factors anyway. But um, I'm. Mm -hmm. on, well, you can't. Um, but I'll, 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 come, I'll respond to that. Yes, you can't say I'm in a, a smaller ward, but my workload is the same because I've got a lot of social housing. The Bank Commission won't listen to that. Well, we'll come back to that. Well, mate, I mean, we, we can't all have the same amount of no, clearance to get, otherwise, we all represent identical wards, aren't we? Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Brian, did you want to make a finish off the point? I'll ask the to respond. Yes, I was going to make the point about the different electoral registers that's been introduced today, the post registration that's been made. Just one observation. Possibly, um, Boundary Commission wants us to decide on a number and then think about how uh, the wards are organised. But we could make life a lot easier if we actually think about how that might be at the same time. Even if it's born, we don't have to come to that issue till later. Uh, yes, by all means, come uh, agree, agree a number, but let's make uh, agree a number which makes life easy for us rather than one that's going to make life difficult. Judgment. Yeah, and in response to that, it is my view, my considered view, that 58 makes life very comfortable in addressing what we've got to do. Yeah. Well, I've done the number crunching, yeah. Chairman, and I, I, I've got yeah. some problems with 58. Yeah, and it's not perfect, but it's, 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 it's almost, it's better than 57. Mm -hmm. And I don't think it goes to 59. 59 makes it slightly, slightly easier. Mm -hmm. uh, but on the grounds that would probably let, let us have one more. Um, and I know it's on population I'm talking about at the moment, but there are other factors that the Commission will be looking at mm -hmm. for an increase. Mm -hmm. And I think that the problem sort of raised about the problems in the west of the borough and the kind of community that's going to be created there just before 58, I think we can make 58 work. Mm -hmm. Tim, do you want to respond to? Right, I'll, I'll just, um, to having recognised the Council Marks raised the 11 points, I won't go through them individually. But what I would say is, uh, I would, um, uh, with the greatest respect, take up the point about timing. Um, we were first approached in June about this, and the, um, we made absolutely certain that when we had certainty about what the, um, uh, the Commission were wanting, and they did change their position, that um, part, party leaders and others were engaged right from the outset. So we approached. It was possible that there might have been a review in June. Um, I, my recollection is that I, I, I supplied the figures, um, which are in the first chart that they reproduced at that time, and they made their decision on that basis. But we really didn't have anything to tell you. And I, I think what I'd make the point overall, in making, in preparing this report, um, I've referred to the, uh, the session of the Commission on the 2nd of um, um, October, and the mem all member presentation on, on, on the 3rd of December. Please tell me, please tell us if you think that we've misrepresented anything that the, the Commission has said. Because we're trying to convey some very subtle and difficult me messages, which are quite elusive at times. And um, this is why we produced this mass of paper. We're not hiding anything. I, I think that your points, um, and this is a personal response, on um, the presentation of the member survey stuff, I think they're very well made. I don't think, and it's no criticism of Brian who um, put all this together, it doesn't look great. But then again, we were, we were asking members for that, for that input, and certainly I still think there are things in, 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 in the submission document that are, that are possibly repetitive. And, and, um, and that we could do with some editing down. But as the Chair has said, um, we approached the Commission and said, which is the best format for this? And it happened to be, I think Sheffield is the one that we used, but there were an infinite number that could have been used. Um, your point about the 2020-2021, the, the, um, um, we will need to come up with 21 figures, 2021 figures later in the process, but that's what we've got at the moment. Um, so the hearing subcommittee point was uh, picked up, and I think Brian will have a complete note of where you want the um, uh, want the um, the clarifications made, and we'll do that. And um, yeah, and it's not that I need him; I just feel the doctor. Yeah, 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 that's right, and that's exactly what we wanted from you. I think that the um, so I hope that without I hope I'm disrespecting the complexity of your points, but the 
I don't think I could usefully go through one. No, I wouldn't expect um, you to. I have, <laughs> thank you for that. Um, the point about the discrepancy on the figures, I think, is, is well made. Um, they do decline, and I think I've covered that. Yeah. Um, so, Councillor Smith, I hope that's satisfactory. Yeah, yeah. right. um, <clears throat> Councillor Joyce, um, in response to your, um, I think you did raise a very important issue about the time table. And what I regard to you, uh, what I draw to your attention, is the, doc, uh, the material of pages 43 to 45 on this agenda, um, which does in very bold letters set out the dates, key trigger dates. Um, we have to make our submission by the 23rd of um, uh, February, um, and then you'll see what the other, uh, uh, what happens thereafter. It's convenient um, to refer to page 43 as well, because what this document, this submission document that is based on, is those three bullet points that are um, uh, recited there. That's the key to what we have to do, and that's what the document is based on. Um, Councillor Kennedy, if I come to your point about um, um, council size, there is no optimum council size. There isn't one. The, um, and we have had this discussion with the Commission. I can, I can point you to reviews, recent reviews of councils with a smaller population than ours in Warrington, with fewer functions because they're shower districts, but have larger council sizes. And that's been approved by the Commission. Those members that have had face-to-face -face briefings um, will have heard the mantra from the Commission, it's up to you to produce the evidence. They don't say what that evidence is, and this comes back to, crosses over with the point that Council Parish made. Um, and again, as some members know, um, and I can point members to this, and I think um, certainly one member has done this, I can point to individual testimonies that the um, councillors have sent to the Commission that have been very compelling, very compelling indeed. Um, and the example I've quoted is of Milton Keynes. They made a submission um, of a certain council size. It was rejected by the, um, uh, the Boundary Commission. In the Boundary Commission said to Milton Keynes to try again. Individual members uh, wrote to the Commission and said, well, this is what we do. This is what I, Councillor X from Milton Keynes, this is my lived experience. And it was on the basis of those testimonies that the um, that the um, the originally sought figure was accepted. And so the other the other point that I would make is the commission have also said you can make your submission, but if anybody else makes a submission, it can be an individual that might be more compelling. Mm -hmm. And that was explicitly brought out at the um, the December meetings. So what I'm saying, Council Parish, is that. It is legitimate to bring out your, um, uh, your workload, and it may be different, um, the, um, and it, but it goes to council size. And if I again refer you to page 43, um, we will consider the representational role of councillors in the local community and how they engage with people, conduct casework, and represent the council and local partner organisations. Now, that may be a different lived experience for each of you, as individual councillors. It probably is, because you represent different areas, um, you have different perceptions of your own role. That's perfectly legitimate. Now, we as officers, we can't, we can't capture that comprehensively. And that's partly why I'd say to Council Marks that we tried to count, uh, and it's probably too blunt at all. And I would urge councillors to make their own representations. So I think I've covered the ground. I hope I've shown respect to the, 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 the complexity of the questions are. We are open to be questioned on this. We accept that it's not a perfect document. We bring it to you as early as possible in a very compressed and pressured timetable. Um, but we've actually bought a little bit of time. We have the council meeting on the 26th of uh, January. We don't have to make the submission until the 23rd of February. So I think that we've bought as much time as we can in a very compressed timetable. So I will leave it there, Chair, if that's OK. Um, I think I've covered just about everything that's been done. OK, are we ready to proceed? Are we happy to read recommendations? Yeah.
Thank you. Um, um, thank, can I thank you all for reading the report? <laughs> <laughs> And I believe I have looked at the statistics for the growth in the aged population of, of Warrington um, and 60% increase in those over 65 in the next 22 years. And I just can't remember who it was said it, but apparently when the old age pension was introduced, there were 20 working people for every pensioner. And in a few years' time, there will only be two working people to pay your pension. So the motto was, choose your two very carefully. Okay, and that has to do with this. Sorry, sir. Sir, 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 I, I think Jim is going to. Oh, you think that's right? Thank you. Okay, well, thank you, Elena. Thank you very much.